Hey Khalil. Hey everyone. Um, my name is Oscar. I was doing part of the stream, which is a collaboration between me and Jose Rosales. We are actually creating a character. Um, the idea is to have like uh, the different parts of the character divided by, for example, the arms, the legs, and the head. And each each stream will will be actually tackling different parts of the of the creature. Or well, so far, it's like an alien. So right now, what I'm going to do is continue on the shoulder plates. And hopefully I will have like the arms completed by by the end of the stream. So right here on the bottom right, you can actually see a map of how the character is divided. The red parts are actually the ones that are like... Mm, I'm supposed to be doing the red parts and Jose is going to do the blue parts of the, of the character. Hey, Manuel Jesus. Hello. How are you? Thanks for tuning in. Um, so, last time that I actually did the collaboration, I created these like um, fancy looking parts right here. So, what I want to do is to have like the same design for the shoulder plates. So I have in a separate se separate tool the shoulder plates which I created with using live booleans. So what I'm going to do is actually integrate the the fancy like design thing that I created. Hey Malikus, sup? Is that map a light spot? Mm, which one? You mean like uh, this? So I created these ones by using creating a plane and using the mask um, mask pen tool to create like different um, patterns and shapes. And after that, after I have finished creating the the shapes. Oh no, the, bl ah, the right and blue shape, it's actually just uh, an image on top of the of the stream. It's a PNG that I created. So it's easier for people to understand um, what am I creating and what's Jose's um, part of the model. So it's just like a, an image I created in Photoshop and I, I use, I'm using OBS for the streaming so OBS has like different layers. Like how is it done to have like to have it on top of the stream or to have like the the drawing done? Malikus. Hey Adrián, ¿qué onda? Pues este es un stream que es colaboración entre José y yo. De hecho, la idea es que las partes rojas del modelo de abajo, el del personaje, las partes rojas son las que yo voy a modelar y las azules son las de José. Y pues estamos haciendo justamente un personaje entre los dos. Ahora sí que poco a poco vamos creando el personaje improvisándolo. Hoy espero terminar los brazos y posiblemente igual y sacarle un poco del, del abdomen. Oh, yeah, the software, uh, it's Photoshop. I mean, it was like pretty straightforward. I looked for an image of a, of a silhouette of a man and I just painted over it like very, it's not really perfect, just to save like a lot of time and give the idea of how the shapes are done. So it's not, not nothing really special about the design of the character on the top, bottom. <laughs> Hey, Ben Duke. Sup, man. Oh, awesome. 
thanks. Uh, I look for him and I'm personally gonna thank him. Cooker. That's really kind from, from him. So, uh, what I'm going to do it right now is to create I want to create an open space right here on the shoulder plates. Right now, I use them like uh, like very hard surface, sci-fi looking shapes. However, I want to repeat like these patterns again right here. So what I was thinking is creating like a like a window right here. Uh, Kali, may I go over to Twitch? It seems like YouTube never gets any love in terms of views interacting. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I am actually using an app which is called, um, let me see, it's called uh, Restream.io. So the app, it's, it's really useful because both the chat from Twitch and YouTube, um, it's on the same window. So I'm able to see like both, um, both the questions, the questions from YouTube and Twitch at the same time. So, if it works for you better Twitch, it's it's completely okay to switch over to Twitch. But I'm able to see your questions just as easy as as fine as, as the question from Twitch, Khalil. Adrian, me imagino que regalarás unos tips como siempre. Sí, pues espero. Creo que la idea es, mientras voy modelando y agregando un otro tip, espero que no me los acabe todos, pero esa es la idea. So I'm going to start with the shapes right here. What I'm going to do, since I'm using live boolean, I'm just going to insert any, any oh, I need to change this symmetry right here, so maybe X, yep. Oh, okay, you are switching to Twitch then? Okay. See you there, Khalil. So I already separated, well, before I forget actually, uh, on the top, I have a different banner right now, which is, let me see if I'm correct with the name. It's about the Seabridge Magic Wheelchair Design Contest, which will take place, well, it's taking place since the 30th of April, which was like Monday, <laughs> this week started the, the contest. And the idea is to create a, a wheelchair for a there's this organization called uh, Magic Wheelchair. They create like custom wheelchairs for for kids. So right now, Pixelogic is part. Uh, it's like um, organizing this contest, and the idea is to create a wheelchair with a team of Star Wars. So it's open to everyone. You can get more information on Seabridge Central or in the in Seabridge um, like website. Over there is like, um, they have like different files to have like uh, the scale of the, the wheelchair and some images as reference and examples of different um, wheelchairs that the organization has already done before. So I'm I'm taking place and I'm taking part of the contest. I I already started. I'm making a rancor from Star Wars from Return of the Jedi. So the idea is to have like the kid on the wheelchair being grabbed like Luke Skywalker on on Jabba's palace, but by the rancor. So it's gonna be like a massive. Well, I don't want to make that big of a of a wheelchair because otherwise it's gonna be like super hard oh the other thing it's going to be like presented to the kid over in comic-con in san diego's comic-con so i don't want to make anything super big because it's going to be like super hard to move around in the halls of comic-con 
So if you have like a chance to, to be part of the contest, I would totally recommend it. And it's like a like a very good cause. I mean, the kids really enjoy having like this um, custom made wheelchairs. I was looking at some of the examples of previous years, and there was like a Jurassic Park one with a Velociraptor. I mean, they have like pretty cool designs. So I'm trying to f look for a shape that is not like very um, distracting. However, I want to have enough, enough space right on the shoulder to be able to, to add like this um, like Baroque detail that I created before. So that, that's the main idea. The main idea. So trying to find an interesting shape to use it as a boolean to cut the shoulder plates. I think mm, I'm not certain about this shape. Hey, Dundin, <laughs> how are you, mate? What time is it there in New Zealand? Happy Friday already. <laughs> I'm not really in love with this shape, so I'm going to keep trying to look for another one. Three fifteen AM I guess no PM I I'm guessing like 1500 hours, maybe? Hey, big brush, how did T-Rex end? Um, I think I, I can actually show you... Um, give me a second. So at the end, I still need to figure out some of the shapes of the legs of the, of the T-Rex. Well, it was actually like a reptilian, but let me find, how can I actually show you? Mm, yeah, I can actually use, I have it on Instagram, so let me look for it. The only thing that I don't really like that much from using, uh, oops, oops, sorry, from using the Restream IO app, is that I'm not able to like answer or not that I know of. But that's how the creature from the last stream ended. Oh yeah, makes more sense. I <laughs> have no idea what I thought. That's like 3 a.m. It's not, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so, 
still looking for an interesting shape. I'm mm -mm. looking for oh, IMM model kit. So let me look for it. I might actually use just like a very primitive shape because I don't want anything fancy for for that patterns. Since I already will be adding like all this baroque detail all over it, so makes no sense having it. Oh yeah, this is exactly what I was looking for. It's perfect, I'm just thinking that I might do it a little bigger. So there it is, I think I'm going to stick with this one, I might actually add some details, just let me see what I, what Jose did for details on his hard surface, because I want to like, keep the same design all over the, the same, all over the character, so apparently he didn't add it, like any stencils on or alpas, so for now, I guess I'm going to leave it right there. So I'm going to delete that part and I'm going to save first this one as shoulder plates. Yep, okay. So make boolean mesh. And oh, I forgot to subdivide the the shoulder blades. There it is. So again, make boolean mesh. <laughs> yeah, it fits perfectly with the stream, right? I always have a, a lot of trouble finding like interesting music that is not like super distracting to me. So this type of classical music, it's like perfect. Did you like uh, the newest movie of the Lone Ranger? Like the, the remake they did like, I think it's like three to four years ago, I think. It's not really that old, but yeah, I think it's like three, three years old. No, maybe four. Okay, so there it is. So right now, I think I'm going to. A glass, try Interstellar's movie soundtrack. Oh, I love that soundtrack. Even the movie, I, I really enjoyed that movie, but I'm not certain I'm allowed to use like copyright music. 
I'm only allowed to use free to use music and since this type of music like classical music doesn't have like um, any copyright infringement like problems especially with YouTube I mean I actually downloaded this version of this song um, from the YouTube library of like free to use because they tend to be the ones who delete your videos if you're like or at least mute them if you're like infringing any of the copyright singies <laughs> yeah, Kimo I really like that take of Johnny Depp on, on the character. I mean, to be honest, I never saw like the original show until after the movie. But I really enjoyed the movie. I really find it like funny. I mean, it's not like a masterpiece, but it's not bad either. Only the, 10 years ago? <laughs> hey Marun, ¿qué onda bro? ¿Cómo estás? So... Let me see if I duplicate it, yep. So the good thing about this shape is that it's like completely improvised and I mean I can completely sh change the shape and it's still looking like like it's the same design even though it's com I completely changed at the end like the shapes. Oh, thanks, Les. So I want to keep like the same fancy looking design, but I don't mind change it, changing it enough to fit like this part of the shoulders. So I really like creating like backstories for the characters. So it's I'm thinking that this is like maybe a politician or like a very wealthy alien. So it has like this maybe combat armor, but it's also like very elegant looking and filled without uh, filled with a lot of useless stuff. Like I mean, this doesn't look like very useful for an armor, but that's the idea to have like this character to be like super over the top. <laughs> wow, Sweeney Todd, it's like 10 years ago. <laughs> wow. Man, <laughs> it really hit me. <laughs> Time flies. Sunny Todd was another movie that I really enjoyed. 
Ey, archuntos. Arcontos. <ríe> Hoy le saco al, al pool. Al player. Ey, Nefertiti. ¿Qué onda? Ey, Eduardo. Saludos hasta allá, Argentina. Ando justamente ahorita con un amigo trabajando ahí en, en un proyecto bastante interesante de... Impresiones 3D, pero para... Para cosas de dentista, como carillas para dientes. Ah, qué chido, gracias con todos. Pues bienvenido. Aquí andamos todos los jueves. Thanks, man. Oh, Adrián, lo que pasa es que el stream de hoy, o sea, usualmente me turno uno y uno, el de hoy en teoría es en inglés, el de la siguiente semana es como en teoría en español, pero, o sea, la verdad es que si tienes alguna duda de lo que estoy haciendo, igual pregúntame y no hay ningún problema estar comiendo el idioma. Digo, la teoría es que debería ser uno y uno, pero casi siempre en los streams de español, por eso luego hablo en inglés, porque entra gente que, que solo habla inglés y así, entonces no es como una regla. Lo que estaba diciendo es que estoy ajustando esta carilla que hice antes, en, la, en el stream antepasado. Para que tenga como el mismo estilo que, que el resto de los meshes que creé. So what I'm going to do right now is duplicate this shape over. So, oops, mirror and weld is not working. So the idea with mirror and weld is that it's going to duplicate whatever it's on the left to the right. So right now I don't have anything on the on the left. So what I would actually do is go to the deformers. No, not deformers. Deformation and hit mirror. That will actually sh will mirror the mesh and switch it to the other side of the of the mesh, and then I can actually use mirror and weld. So when I, whenever you start working and you realize you're not working with symmetry, that's an easy way to to fix it. Hey, saludos, Diego. Hasta allá, hasta Perú. ¿Cómo están? Design. Uh, hello, do you know how can I learn Zbrush from scratch? Do you know some recommended places? Yeah, actually, I know. The perfect place is actually on Zbrush website. It's called, like, the... It's called um, Zbrush Classroom. Uh, let me check. Um, yeah, it's Cibro, uh, it's pixelogic.com slash Cibrosh C Classroom. Um, let me paste the link for you. So they have l like a lot of tutorials, like covering from the very beginning, like teaching you what. But, uh, teaching you each and every single button and what's like 
their purpose and how can actually you use them. It's really, really useful. I started lear learning with ZBrush Classroom and they have like, with each iteration of ZBrush, they create like a new, like a new batch of videos. So it, it's completely, completely up to date. So for example, the newest version, which is to ZBrush 2018, that's um, the version that included um, Sculptures Pro, and those, and there are a lot of a lot of tutorials, including um, Sculptures Pro. So let me paste the link. So I'm not supposed to paste links on. Well, I'm not allowed to place links on, on the chat of YouTube, so... Um, nope. So you're going to have to fix the link. I'm just like giving a lot of space between the dot com. But that's like the perfect site to learn. Oh. Yep. Turned in already. Thanks for the link. How did you cut the ornate pattern in the inserted mesh? Um, give me a second. So I created the pattern like over a plane, right here, for example. Um, the idea was to, like, using the pen, pen masking, well, I need more resolution, I started, like, creating the shapes, and once I was, like, happy with the design that I already painted, let's say it that way, um, I'll go to extract, subtool, extract, and extract then accept and i have like this mesh without the plane and what i did is for example on the shoulder plates i just inserted a new subtool Let me see where it is. Okay. Oops. Yep. So this is the new subtool that I created. And after that, I duplicate like this subtool to have like the original without any type of deformation and on this uh, centered. And then I just like started moving the shape and using the move brush to adjust this new subtool to the to the shoulder plate. So that's the way I actually created these details. So to be honest it's like <laughs> a very rough detail. I still have to fix it and maybe I maybe I'll create another one. So it's right now it's just giving me like a sense of what I'm going for for the character, at least with the shapes. But this might not be the final details for for this part. Yep, you're welcome, bro. Um, ¿Cuántos años tienes? Llevas trabajando en esta industria. Ah, gracias Eduardo. Eh, no. <risa> gracias Eduardo. Ah, tengo 28 y yo creo que llevo unos 6 años trabajando en esto. Aproximadamente, más o menos. Ah, Adrián, ah, sí, no. No me obligan a hacer como streamings en inglés y en español. Pero... Pues yo preferí tener como uno y uno. Pero igual, o sea, no es obligatorio que tenga que ser completamente en inglés. Solo era como para tener más opciones. 
Pero igual si tienes alguna duda, pues igual puedes preguntarla sin problemas. For hard surface modeling, do you prefer to work it on ZBrush? Well, it depends completely. If I'm already, for example, I think it was it was like six months ago. I had to do like a car. So, since I already had done cars before on Max, it it was easier for me to do like the entire hard surface modeling on C on 3ds Max. But um, if I'm all, if I'm creating, if I'm like um, going on the fly without any type of concept art or anything like that, if I'm just like improvising and sketching, then yes, I, I try to do everything on ZBrush. For example, I'm going to show you another project I did like, I think it was like a month ago. No, no, it's not a month, like a couple of weeks ago. Give me a second, let me save this one. So... So I did this for a masterclass I took a month ago in Adam Sims Creative. So it's still a whip, it's not finished, but the idea is to I created everything on ZBrush and most of the shapes are like pretty basic because they're mostly primitives and for the details I used booleans however this it's not like the main the final shape once I created this what I would do is take it back into 3 Max and then create like red topology for me it, I think it's easier to do the red topology of hard surface stuff so I create like a new mesh out of based on these on these data details and on the new shapes of of what I created on on ZBrush but um, it depends completely I mean most of the time I try to create the main shapes on ZBrush and then start um, creating the edge loops and the, the correct topology on 3ds Max so I have a lot of subtools on this one so that's that's the idea when I create like hard surface stuff. Hey Kike, <laughs> Kike, <laughs> ando bien con la lengua bien trabada hoy. ¿Qué tan bueno es el mercado en este medio? La verdad es que es bastante abierto. O sea, me ha tocado trabajar de todo. Y en ningún momento, ahora sí que me he tenido que salir del medio para buscar chama en otras cosas. Una de las cosas, de las cosas padres de esto es que te toca trabajar de todo, desde videojuegos, cine, televisión. Ahorita lo que estaba mencionando hace rato es que en Argentina tengo unos amigos con los que estoy trabajando. Es un socio que me invitó a un proyecto bastante interesante, no sé si ande por ahí en el stream viendo. La idea es, él, él es dentista. Y estamos haciendo como unas carillas de impresión 3D para dientes. Entonces son de las cosas que realmente hay muchísimo campo de trabajo. No solo en videojuegos y cine. También hago bastante joyería. De hecho, casi siempre mis freelance dependen mucho de joyería. Joyería que imprimo en 3D. Bueno, yo no las imprimo ya. Pero es joyería para, impresi para impresión 3D. Hey, Daniel la Encarnación. ¿Qué onda, bro? ¿Ya tenías tiempo sin ver un directo? Ah, pues... La vez por darte una vuelta por aquí ahorita. So what I'm going to do right now is change the shape. This was meant to be like... The fleshy... Parts of the of the alien, 
that are being protect protected by the shoulder plates. So I'm just trying to fit them on the new shoulder plates that have like this window. So I'm not really super happy with this shape, what I'm going to do is create another one because I think I screw a little over by deforming too much the shapes. So I'm going to try to create another one. So I have like this, this is like the main shape I created before. I'm going to duplicate again and I'm going to deform this one. So what I'm thinking is actually I want to keep like this shape in this scale because what I did before is actually making this part bigger, so I lose a lot of detail. What I'm going to do is duplicate it. So one cool tip and useful tip is while having your soup tool on with the gizmo, you can press Control and then move, and you are able to duplicate the, the same mesh. It's like on 3ds Max by pressing Shift. What are your main freelance work incomes at the moment? So it depends completely, to be honest, on the, on the month. Like two months ago, it was completely video games. Right now, it's completely um, jewelry. So usually it's like that. Mainly it's, it's a mix between jewelry design and stuff for video games and like for commercials and TV. Those are like the my strongest income as what freelance is related to. So let me see. Hey Juntai, ¿qué onda, bro? Hey Black, thanks for tuning in. Oh, I need to deactivate the X symmetry. There it is. So I think this works even better, just like this, because I have more details. And it doesn't look like the shape was the same and it was just like duplicated all over. Can you repeat the pattern repetition technique again? Yeah, sure. So for example, let's say I have this cylinder and what I want to do is have like a five copies of this cylinder. What I'm going to do is um, let me change this to make polymesh 3D so it's actually able to sculpt over it. So what I'm going to do is press one of these three buttons, buttons, which is move, scale or rotate, or the shortcut is W, E and R. So I'll enter into gizmo mode and what I'm going to do is press control hold the uh, control key and then move the, the, the cylinder to whatever I want to duplicate it. Once I have like, for example, let's say right here is, is fine by me. What I'm going to do is release control, but I'm still holding the left click. 
and then I'm going to move and we'll start duplicating. So it, you know, it's easier to duplicate this way because you can actually do the same, like control, left click, and then for example, let's say I want it right here. I'm releasing control, but I'm still holding the left click and I'm starting to move. So I'm able to duplicate in different like patterns, not only like following the wiz the gizmo, like an X, Y, and C, but in diff different um, <laughs> different shapes. Hey, Black. Thanks. Uh, so the idea is to have like this character done uh, by the two of us, which is Jose and I. We are creating this character in different pieces. Right now I'm doing the arms. Last time I created um, the jaw and part of the, of the shoulder plates. So Jose is actually doing like the top of the head, the torso, and he's going to be doing like the legs. So that the is to have like this exquisite cadaver created by the two of us. So it's a very interesting technique because you need to think like you're not working alone. You have this character, but it's not your character. And you have to try to keep the same design over so it doesn't look too obvious that it was done by two different people. Pues, Daniel, el juego que acabo de terminar, bueno, en el que trabajé, no lo terminé yo. <risa> Acaba de salir hace, creo que unos tres meses. Estuve trabajando con el estudio de Squad. Son increíbles esas personas. La verdad es que me la pasé súper bien con ellos. Y el juego se llama Kerbal. Kerbal, Spray, Sp <risa> Kerbal Space Program. De hecho, yo creo que la próxima semana voy a estar subiendo algo del arte que hice para, para ese estudio, a mi art station. Entonces yo estaría haciendo como un buen spam en estos días. So, I'm already like... I, I really prefer this design. Than the, compared to the one that I did before, did before. <laughs> my English is really sucking tonight, so I'm sorry about that. I have no idea why. Even my Spanish has been like sucking today. So I think I'm pretty happy with this result right now. What I'm going to do is the same technique that I did before by pressing mirror and weld. So right now I don't have anything on the left, so it won't be able to duplicate. So it's actually telling me that there's nothing to do like the, the process of mirror and weld. So what I'm going to do is press mirror and then mirror and weld and there it is. Hey, Denise. How are you? So, let me activate symmetry and X, since I already have something on the left side. And I'm just going to fix this one. Fix this one. So 
so for the arms, I was actually thinking in creating something more um, weird looking. So I'm going to hide right now this one, these arms. And I'm going to use Sculptris Pro to create some different arms. Hey David, ¿qué onda? ¿Cómo te va? Ah, qué bueno que te gustó el podcast. Uh, el próximo, en teoría, va a ser la próxima semana. Va a ser una entrevista con un artista ahí conocido del medio. De hecho, justamente he estado viendo los videos de los de Flip, Norm Flip Normals. Y posiblemente hagamos algo parecido para los siguientes, que sea como parte video y parte está platicando con un streaming más o menos streaming podcast hey Dakalo, ¿qué onda bro? ¿cómo estás? qué gusto verte por acá, bro So, Jose already did some legs. So, I think I'm going to over with the same design he already did. Let me turn off dynamic, because I hate dynamic mode on. Like these long arms. And I think I'm going to create the torso, like a not very rough shape right now, nothing too detailed. Ah, perfecto, Dakalo. ¿En qué andas trabajando ahorita? Bueno, sí se puede saber, porque luego... <laughs> Los NDAs y así complican las cosas. Hey, Mr. Ikus, <laughs> welcome. The idea behind this stream is actually a collaboration. It's not like my own design. I'm mean, doing this stream with Jose Rosales, which is also another streaming in the Pixelogic channel. And we divided like this creature into several parts, which is um, give me a second right here. This small map that I created. It's it's the easiest way to to explain that I'm doing. For example, the red parts of the character, which is the jaw, the belly, and the arms. And Jose is doing the legs, the upper part of the torso, and the head. So right now. I'm working on the arms and sketching a little bit of the torso. I'm still not sure what I'm going with the torso. I'm I'm a big fan of creating like some type of backstory in the characters. So right now the idea that I'm having is that this is supposed to be like very a very rich alien, maybe a politician or like a a general, something like that. So his armor, it's not only like functional, but it's supposed to be like very elegant. So that's why I created like these Baroque patterns. So that's the idea right now. So I really like having like this backstory. So whatever I'm designing something, I have something to rely on in the character, for example, if I create a character that's not supposed to be rich, I'm not going to include anything that um, doesn't fit into this backstory of the character. Even though I want to sculpt, for example, something that's supposed to be like very high tech, maybe he, if he's supposed to be like very poor, I won't be doing like something that doesn't fit this, the backstory of the character.
Eh, ya usé es que onda, bro. <ríe> sí, exactamente. Es la idea hasta ahora. Como un aristócrata. Bueno, pues a ver qué vamos saliendo con el personaje. A hey, creation great and you. Ese personaje que estás modelando se siente muy rígido, es decir, no tendría como hacer su movimiento cuando esté arreglado. Sí, de momento lo voy a hacer como una pose muy rígida. No creo reguearlo, ni que José lo regué, pero la idea es que se vea funcional. Entonces, de momento, creo que esta posición está funcionando. Por las cosas que le hizo José aquí abajo, se ve como acuático, entonces creo que voy a seguir con el mismo concepto y lo voy a hacer como estas partes como si fueran aletas, pero esa es la idea. Juntei, ayúdame con algo, porfa. Hice la ropa en Marvelous, pero cuando le importo a Zibros, le doy subdividir y se separa cada parte. Es una forma de unir los polígonos. Sí, o sea, lo que pasa es que las partes que se están separando son los diferentes sims que creaste. Entonces, es una forma sencilla de crear como todo junto. Por ejemplo, digamos que esta parte... Deja, pienso cómo sería. Dame un segundo. Tienes algo como esto. Ups, debí haber guardado antes. Bueno, a ver si no se traba. Ah, no se trabó. Entonces, por ejemplo, tienes algo así, y si le doy subdividir, lo que va a hacer es separarme los más, ¿te das cuenta? O sea, en teoría, tú tienes algo así, que están como un poquito separados, igual y no se nota, pero cuando lo subdivides se nota muchísimo. Entonces lo que vas a hacer, podrías duplicarlo para tener como siempre un mesh, por si acaso, de emergencias. Y puedes, bueno, en este caso, digamos que quiero pegar estas partes, ¿no? Lo que puede hacer es Remesh by Dynamesh. No, si lo tengo que Es que lo tengo separado yo por... Ahí está. Lo que vas a hacer es hacerle un Remesh by Dynamesh y luego lo que vas a hacer es pasarle todos los detalles, pasárselos a, a un Mesh que no tenga tantos detalles. Um, es que con este no está funcionando, pero no sé si, si me puedes pasar tu, tu Mesh, igual y te lo podría, te podría explicar aquí. Porque como no tengo ningún Mesh de, de Marvelous ahorita, no está saliendo como, como lo tengo en mente. Oh, igual y tengo uno por aquí, deja ver. Creo que no. Pero el chiste es justamente eso, o sea que todas las subtools se queden juntas y con Dynamite se junte todo. Y ya lo único que vas a hacer es ir a subtool y proyectar los detalles. Subdivides, proyectas, subdivides, proyectas hasta que tengas todos los detalles pegados a, al solo mesh. O la otra forma es 
digamos que tienes esto así, le vas a poner como una máscara a toda tu ropa, o a toda la playera, lo que tengas, y le das un extract. Entonces ya tengo este extract. Si te das cuenta, lo que hice el extract es pegarlas todavía más. Te es todo un rollo aquí, pero la idea es que justamente estén más pegadas para el momento que haces Dynamesh, se pegue todo. Ahí está. Entonces, si te das cuenta, bueno, como tengo varios meches pegados, hice todo un desastre, pero si te das cuenta ya no me lo separa como antes, que tenía como todas las líneas cortadas. Esa sería como la forma en la que yo lo haría, con el extract. <risa> la secuencia bilingüe. <risa> No, no hay de que junta ahí. Ah, gracias, Dacalo. En Marvelous también tienen la opción de exportarlo todo como una sola pieza. Entonces eso te va a ahorrar completamente el problema de, de que te lo exporte todos por separados. I'm going to start using Sculptures Pro for the arms. I mean, I'm not certain what I'm doing. I'm just trying to replicate the same shape that already Jose did on the legs. Hey Arnold, ¿qué onda? ¿Cómo te va? So I'm just starting to block out like the shapes. Even though I'm not certain like the design of the arms already, but The idea, the idea is to have something that resembles maybe like something aquatic, maybe. But at the same time to look a little alien. So I could actually create some other mesh right here for the forearm. Could be another hard surface part. Oops, created four of them.
So I'm not r really using sculptures for all the time. I try to turn it off and I tend to use it just when I really need it. Otherwise, if I'm not like really careful with Sculptures Pro, it tends to re delete a lot of details that I already created. So it's good to turn it off and just use, them, use it whatever you're, it's really, really, really necessary. For example, right here is the perfect place to use sculptures because I don't have enough um, geometry to keep like sculpting and I don't want to subdivide right now. So I'm going to use sculptures for this part only once I'm happy with this, the, the new mesh. I'm going to turn it off because there is no point in having, sculpt having sculptures pro on all the time. So I'm just trying to duplicate the same shapes that Jose already did for the legs. I don't want to create like an exact copy of the design. Just close enough so it looks like it's part of the same creature and not different parts like paste together. Um, the name of the song. Give it a second. Es Obertura 1812 de Tchaikovsky. Si quieres luego te la paso o te la pongo en el chat. Que es más fácil si te la pongo en el chat.
Yeah. <laughs> Shake up ski rocks. Antonin, mm, not certain if I have already listened to him. Maybe I do. The, the name doesn't ring a bell right now. So I'm using a lot of Sculptures Pro right now to create the shapes of the abdomen. I'm going to create something like really stylized, however... I want to create also the look of something alien, alien looking. Oh yeah, probably. I mean, I'm not certain about the name, the Symphony of the New World. However, I'm pretty sure I have listened to it. We're going to, to look for it on the like uh, YouTube library of uh, music that it's safe to stream with. So maybe for this part, it's gonna be a little different. I'm thinking that I could actually like divide his forearm into like two sections. One is supposed to be like this hard surface that I create, that I created on the shoulder, and the other one is going to be like those fancy-looking patterns. Hey Fonseca, good evening man. Cheers from Mexico. I mean, the character, the character is not really finished, however, design, design related, I think it's like almost done, at least the parts that I'm supposed to be doing. I don't think that I'll be changing too much the design, either the design of the abdomen or the arms. I'm going to stick with it, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm actually reprojecting all the detail into uh, a new mesh for the arms to be able to, sculpt, to start sculpting details.
something that I really like doing for my character this for characters is for the eyes. Oh man, for the eyes I really like creating like these shaders to give them a different look. Let me check. So there it is. So sometimes it's easier to start adding details everywhere. For example, the shoulder plates right now, they're like very clean. However, since I already have way too much detail right here, I don't see the point of adding even more details. Sometimes it's good to have like resting zones without that much details. El personaje que están haciendo va a ser más anatómico, tendrá partes hard surface. Uh, no, es, es, va a ser más anatómico. O sea, la verdad es que el diseño de la cabeza es de José. Yo solo le agregué como todos esos detalles que son como garigoleados. Pero pues José se fue como por una forma medio geométricas, orgánicas. Y eso me gustó. Entonces he intentado replicar eso en diferentes partes del, del mesh como en los brazos o en los hombros entonces yo creo que nos vamos a quedar con las mismas formas Uh, no, you actually need to apply to each material, to each sub tool a different material if you want to to start adding the materials. For example, for the eyes, adding this material to the eyes, it doesn't affect any other part of the body. So, for example, if I want a different material for the shoulder plates, what I would do is go into, for example, this material and then go and turn on MRGB or just M if I just want to use the material and not the colors and I usually press this button which is field object but this is like my personal user interface you can find the button right here in color and field object and that will actually add the material to the subtool material and color if you select MRGB RGB just color and M just for the materials. It's really looking interesting with that material actually. Hey, Yosins. Thanks, bro. It's looking like pretty crazy, to be honest, but I'm really enjoying creating the design. 
en donde se juega el modelo terminado. Uh, posiblemente nuestros art stations, cada quien saque un render del personaje por su parte. De hecho, el anterior que hicimos, en teoría de ella debimos haberlo subido, pero nos ha ganado el tiempo y no, no lo hemos terminado. Bueno, ya terminamos el modelado, solo nos falta meterle detalles en cuanto a materiales y texturas. Y ya cada quien va a hacer su propio render y cada quien lo subirá a su art station. So I'm going to separate these two different subtools. So I split hidden and close holes. And for this part it's going to be the same, which is pressing over in a subtool, split, split hidden. And you go to geometry, modify topology, and then because right now if I isolate this part of the mesh it's it's hollow right now and the normals inside the model they're like well zebras doesn't work with uh, double sided normals so you need to close this hole by pressing where is it close 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 holes right here there it is <laughs> it's just uh, to be honest I had, I already had like the difficult part which was doing like the bottom part of the head I had a lot of troubles coming up with a design that doesn't look way too different to what Jose already did for the top part of the of the head so for example Right here, what I did is all this part. Jose this, I'm sorry, Jose did uh, this part, and what I did, what I did is actually creating like the jaw and part of the neck. But coming up with that design was like pretty. It was pretty hard because it's a very unique creature has like a lot of geometric shapes even though it's supposed to be like organic it has like a big tri um, rhomboid on on the back part of the head Select the soup tool, change everything to the new material, and then press set, then change it back to default. Well, to change it back to default, to be honest, I'm not sure. I mean, the easiest way is just, for example, if I want to go back to normals, to, to having like the same material to all on all over the on all the soup tools. For example, for the eyes, right now I have like this bright blue material. What I need to do is turn off colorize. And you can find colorize right down here in polypaint and colorize. So you press colorize off, it will actually remove the material. Well, it, it won't remove the materials, it, it just won't be visible anymore. Materials and colors that you add to the sexual. Mm, I don't think I will be needing this one. So I'm just going to hide it just in case.
and I'm using Siri Mesh to create a new a new um, sub tool because right now what I'm going to do with this is going to be hard surface part so I'm going to start using booleans just that I, as I did with the shoulders so right now I'm using Siri Mesh just to create a, a cleaner mesh It's going to be the same for the, the other part of the mesh. I think that's just fine. What I'm going to do is do for these parts, actually, I'm going to isolate those parts. And should still have my mesh. I'm going to append delete this star and then well I'm seeking two options either I'm going to use the deformation of bend to create like this mesh around this cylinder or I might actually create turn this into insert and into an insert mesh and then I'll start modifying the ornament. Oh perfect Dundin. I wasn't sure if I was covering what you asked. But glad to be of help. So let me see. Going to duplicate this. Bend curve and then oh, it's not supposed to be this one it's bend arc This is just about right. I'm going to press accept. It's not really perfect, but I'm s I think it's working. Uh, 
Uh, let me save this just in case. And again, I'm going to duplicate this mesh. Just because if I screw an completely lose my mesh I still have like a backup mesh to to go back to So I'm just using this as a guide. Yep, I think it's great. Um, so again, mirror, mirroring world, there it is. Now I'm going back to my original mesh, append, and I'm going to insert my new mesh. There it is. Yep. So it's looking really weird, but at the same time, it's <laughs> really interesting. Oh, I know why it's looking weird. I still have this on. There it is. So I'm just trying to fit the top of the part, top of the forearm with this new mesh I created before. Hey Germán, ¿qué onda? ¿Cómo te va? Justo andaba hablando de ti hace rato. So maybe the arms are supposed to be like some type of propeller, maybe I could actually, they could actually use them to swim, uh, I'm not certain, maybe like a turbine, like right here, still have to play with the shapes. 
Sí, obviamente, obviamente bien. <ríe> Andaba más o menos contando un poco del proyecto. So I'm going to start adding hard surface details. Not too much because I already have like those ornament thingies on the rest of the forearm. So I want to make like this very, very clean. I'm using a lot of the IMMs from the spaceship and the, the IMM boolean brush. They have a lot of interesting shapes. So I'm going to try to replicate the same design of the hard surface stuff. So I think I'm going to be doing something like this and then like this. So I'm using just a primitive, a cube, to create like those cuts 
for the hard surface stuff. And I think I'm going to add another shape like the one I have right here. So I'm not really really happy with the design, to be honest I feel the design a little lazy, but I think I'm going to stick with it until the next stream. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it, but I'm keeping it. At least for now. Mm. So I'm going to subdivide this part. Make boolean mesh. And going back to my shoulders. I'm just saving this just because. I don't want to lose this file and not having like different iterations of the same file just in case something happens to any of them. So delete, I'm going to insert another chip tool and I'm adding this.
I cannot seem to find the new mesh. Shoulders. Oh, I know. I was creating the new mesh, but with the star included. So I need to delete those files. And I have to try again, but without the star. So I can make Boolean Mesh. There it is. So you think it's working? I mean, I might want to change it at least. I think in the next stream I'm going to change a little bit of the design of the forearms and the arms. And I think I'm going to call it done for tonight. I mean, I think this is going to be like the shortest stream I've done. <laughs> Usually it's like three to four hours. But I won't be able to stay that long tonight. So just let me check that I have everything. Oh, so those, these were the last, the other arms that I created before on the previous stream but I don't think I'm going to use them so I'm going to delete them I'm not certain about this part because really like this design, however, the combination between the old design and this one, nah, I'm not keeping it. So, yep, I think I'm going to call it done. Just going to fix, fix a little bit of the hands. So, yep, 
that's going to be it. Next stream I'm going to be finishing the arms. I mean, I'll start adding details, like organic shapes like wrinkles and pores and stuff like that. Also the torso, I'm pretty happy with the design so far. And I'm going to be probably changing a little bit of the forearms. I really like the idea of having like this egg-shaped um, ornament stuff on the forearms, but I'm not certain if I'm going to keep it. So, yep. Um, again, thanks guys. Really appreciate you tuning in and staying here, even though tonight I am not certain why, even though my Spanish is sucking and my English is even worse tonight. Maybe I'm super tired. So, this is going to be like the shortest stream I've done. It's just like nearly two hours. But I think we covered like most of the design that I want to change, especially including these parts on the shoulders and creating the arms. I, I mean, the shape of the arms was really important. Hey, Arcontos, glad the stream was useful to you. <laughs> GG, bro. Ahí nos vemos luego en, en el player, ya con el nuevo mapa. Hey, Robin, muchas gracias. Pues ahí va saliendo el personaje. La verdad es que el diseño me está gustando bastante. Ahora sí que es un poco trabajo en equipo, como si fuera un estudio normal, en el que tu modelo no es tuyo, sino es de varias personas. Entonces, en cuanto a eso está muy interesante el proyecto. Tiene una forma muy, muy interesante. Hey, Dune. <laughs> thanks for thanks for tuning in. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I think I'm getting sick. <clears throat> hey, gracias, bro. Qué chido que te hice una vuelta por acá. Creo que te tocó el stream más corto que he hecho. No llegué ni siquiera. Creo que apenas voy a llegar a tres horas. A dos horas. <coughs> no, empecé a las. Sí, sí. Dos horas apenas. Los minutos son de cuatro horas, pero. Como que hoy no. Hoy ando medio cansado y no, no aplico tanto. <risa> Nice speaking to you again, Dunding. Um, yeah, Dakalo. Sí, perdón, bro. Es que hoy como que no. Como que no. Como que ando más cansado y no, no me puedo concentrar muy bien. Y creo que me estoy informando un poco de la garganta. Ahora sí me costó un poco de trabajo hablar. Pero ojalá a ver si en el próximo coincidamos, bro. De todas formas, yo creo que la... el próximo stream es el próximo jueves, entonces ya en teoría regresaré a la normalidad. Streams de 4 horas. Hey, Marun, sí. Perdón, es que creo que mi garganta me está fallando hoy. Y realmente lo que quería era justamente tener un diseño ya más firme en cuanto al, a la criatura, entonces ya ahorita ya está ya está más definido. Y era lo que me preocupaba un poco, sacar algo que ya tuviera un poco más de forma, estuviera más aterrizado. No, gracias a ustedes. Hey Adrián, muchas gracias bro. Qué chido que estuviste aquí también. 
pendiente, Germán. <ríe> no creo que nadie quisiera este, este aplique, pero pues estaría bueno. <ríe> ah, muchas gracias, bro. Pues sí, espero... No, no creo estarme enfermando, solo creo que es cansancio. Yo supongo que es eso hoy. Pero pues a ver. Ya el próximo stream es... Este... El de crear. Yo creo que voy a hacer algo hard surface completamente. So for the next stream, I'm actually thinking in creating something <laughs> that I've been like promising for... I think the last three streams, so it's going to be hard surface for sure, and it's gonna be like next. It's gonna be the mm, the tenth of this month, so next Thursday, <clears throat> and again, guys, on the top I have like this contest that Pixelogic it's organizing the one from the wheelchair it's the idea is to create a wheelchair with a team of Star Wars it's like an amazing contest it's for a good cause it's creating a wheelchair for kids and they're gonna be like um, giving the, the wheelchair in this Comic Con I'm having a, little, a lot of trouble with speaking right now <laughs> hey Royce uh, nice to see the detail in a tree sculpt you can design here it's not just a random splatter of where my animals this has structure and flow nice <laughs> thanks damn yeah, i really dig in the design right now it's it's been like a combination between jose's take on the character and mine and compared to the last um, collaboration stream that I, we did i'm I think this character is more more landed. It's it looks like created for I don't know by a single person instead of like a mixture of different things. Um, ¿Qué onda allá? <laughs> Ahora me agarraste de salida, bro. Este bueno igual lo que les mencionaba es que el concurso de Magic Wheelchair Acaba el 31 de este mes Y es hacer una silla de ruedas para Para niños um, Es un concurso Que está organizando Pixelogic Y Pues la silla ganadora la van a hacer Como realidad para un niño que se la van a entregar En el San Diego Comic Con De este año Y bueno, creo que es todo mm. Perdón Ahora sí me falló un buen la garganta. Que descansen todos. Thanks everyone. Have a good night. Or day. See you guys. <laughs>